Okay, KM6LYW radio viewers. Um, let's see what frequency are we, on, are we on today. We're on 137.62 million cycles. What that means is we're in space. We're listening to space today. Um, we're going to do a quick example of how to get the weather, or at least an image, a picture of, of the Earth and the weather, um, using an NOAA satellite. Um, there's a bunch of different tools you can use here. Um, I've kind of distilled this into something that's easily digestible. So the first thing is GQRX. And that's this guy right here in the center, GQRX. And he is driving one of those RTL SDR dongles that you saw in one of my previous videos. Um, it's the, um, it's kind of that silver thing. I don't know, it looks, uh, I don't know, it's about that big. But anyways, this is driving that. I, what I should probably do is come, in, come up with a picture of that. Um, RTL SDR dongle. I'll show you guys. Let's do images. It's basically, it's this thing right here. You can get it on Amazon for maybe 30 bucks. And with that and an antenna, I got a roll up J pole on the roof. Um, you can get the satellite feeds for weather satellites. Now, these are older satellites. Um, you know, if it, the, the images you see today on TV are the GOES satellites, and those are, you know, up in the gigahertz range, and those are geosynchronous. Uh, but these are some older NOAA satellites. In fact, NOA 15 is coming around, and we're gonna we're gonna get an image from that. So GQRX is here, and then we got GPredict is the satellite tracking software I use, and I don't know if you can see, but NOA 15 is coming down around the mountain as she comes <laughs> coming down from Canada. We're gonna get a shot um, of northern North America, and we can see it over here in the uh, in the bullseye. So I'm gonna put this right here. Um, and the other most important piece of software is WX2Image. WX2Image. Um, you go to WX2ImageRestored.xyz. It's an insane <laughs> domain name. Um, but just search, search for WX2Image and you can get the latest bits. And all, of course, all of this is on Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm using a Linux desktop, which is essentially the same thing. But... When you download it, make sure you get the Linux ARM deb package, and that'll be for Raspberry Pi. And that is WX2 image, and that's what's happening right here. In fact, uh, 15 is rising. WX2 image uh, downloads all the TLE or Kepler elements uh, for a lot of satellites, the weather satellites anyway. And it just knows when they're overhead, and so all you have to do is go over to GQRX here and tune this in. And you want you want to center it if you can. Um, I, I set the filter width to about 40k because this is a really wide signal. I don't know if you can see this here. What I should do is just make this bigger. You can see how wide this signal is, and of course you want to center it for Doppler effect. So I'm I'm fast right now on the cycles just because it's approaching, and we know it's approaching because GPredict is showing us. Um, that it's headed our way. Um, as it leaves, it'll be below that mark for uh, one. What is the uh, 137.62? And this is NOA 15. There's two other satellites. There's 18 and 19 as well. Um, so you want to track those. And this is actually decoding the image right now. And if you want to hear it, it sounds exactly like this. I'm going to kick it up here. Ooh, it's a little loud. So that's what it sounds like. Uh, you hear that tick-tock noise. You know you're on an NOAA satellite. Um, this signal's coming in pretty good. And again, this is just a vertical. I'll kick this down. Kick it down so it's not too annoying. And annoying. And I'm just tracking the satellite as it goes by. I'm using my mouse wheel to scroll this red line, basically. And I can see I can move it back and forth. To adjust the frequency, it's right on center. And that'll give you the best, uh, the best decode here. And again, you want to open this gray area by grabbing the edge and you know making a little wider, a little narrower. And then you'll notice your filter width is changing over here. That needs to be about 37 or 40 um, to avoid any clipping, since it is a pretty wide signal. And then over here, uh, you just kick back and watch. Um, WX2 image is doing its thing. Um, on the left side is a. 
visual image, so the surf visual surface, and then on the right side you see an infrared image. That's the infrared camera, and they both download at the same time. Now when this image is done, um, there's a lot of cool filters we can do to combine those two images to get a complete picture, including precipitation um, and sea surface temperature, uh, cool stuff like that. So this is decoding in real time. Uh, the satellite's passing right now. I'm going to mute the audio. So that's probably annoying uh, and it takes, I don't know, uh, these satellites are hauling ass, I don't know, 50, 15,000 miles an hour, so it's about 10, 12 minutes for this thing to cruise by and it is over, well we can look at it here on the map, it's over Utah right now and I'm in, um, I'm near Sacramento, California, so it's still approaching and I'm going to lower the frequency here a little bit since that's changing due to Doppler. Um, we don't see a lot right now. <laughs> There's not a lot of information in the image other than the visual and the infrared. So when we're done with this, you're going to see WX2 image knows where the, the, the political outlines are of the states and the countries and, and, what, and the ocean and things like that. You'll, you'll see it here in a second. In fact, I might pause it as the satellite flies by. The other important thing is on GQRX, there is an audio volume thing down here on the right. Uh, right now it's in the green. It says 67.6. I know that's probably really, really hard to read, but that needs to be in the green. Usually the higher side of the green is better. Um, yellow is okay, but don't go too high. Um, and you can control that audio volume uh, by using the gain slider under the audio display on GQRX. Right now mine's set to negative 4.4. And of course, if I uh, increase it, we'll see my audio level go up to 71.6 on WX2 image here. And that's probably a little high. And it does change the contrast a little bit. So I can, I can take it down to 4.4. You notice the contrast changed in the image. You can see a little white line in there now. So don't mess with the volume too much while it's uh, downloading. Try and get that set up before the pass. So yeah, I'm at about 68 on the volume on GQRX. Uh, the other thing is, is from our Linux perspective, PAVU control. That's for Pulse Audio V A U control. Um, this is like your audio routing board, honestly. Um, these are all your sources and the things you're recording. Um, of course, you have to ignore the OBS stuff. That's my uh, <laughs> recording software for Linux. And the what I'm doing is the thing that's doing the recording is it says also plug in WX2 image and what I have to set it to a source and so right now GQRX is playing to my speakers so this basically says whatever you hear on my speakers go ahead and record um, and that's what WX2 image is recording is what my speakers sound like right now and of course I have GQRX on the playback tab set to my speakers um, so it, it, essentially I'm routing the audio through GQ, GQRX uh, to my speakers and then from my speakers it's, it's being recorded by WX2 image um, there's probably better ways to do that but that's what I do just make sure you're not playing any other sounds uh, on your speakers or otherwise WX2 image will hear them and you'll see distortion in your image so that's PAVU control this one's really important and a lot of people don't talk about it much so PAVU control that's what you want All right, so the signal's getting dimmer over here, so that does indicate that things are setting. Um, let's look at uh, G-Predict here. We see NOA 15, it's falling. Its elevation is 27 degrees off the horizon. Um, it's uh, the south to the southeast here of Sacramento. It's still coming in, though. Oh, I need to adjust for Doppler. It's actually below the frequency now, that little center tab. I don't know if you can hear this. Can you hear the, the tick-tock? It sounds like a TikTok to me. What do you think? TikTok. It's it's it has a TikTok thing. That's how you know it's an NOA satellite. All right, I'll, I'll go ahead. And I'll mute this for you guys. Um, you're gonna start hearing some fuzz. Um, when you hear the fuzz, you'll see it as static on the WX2 image. Um, yeah, I got a few static bars here. You know, as it rises and sets, it'll have some static in the image. It's hard to avoid. When it's directly overhead and you have an omnidirectional antenna on the roof like I do, and you might get a little static. So usually your satellite images are going to be a little better when the satellite's oblique, like from California to Utah or California to Hawaii. Um, it hits your antenna at more of a, a broadside rather than straight over. And you think straight over is better, <laughs> but it, when it goes right over your no point, uh, the signal drops out a little bit. Now, if you really wanted to get into this, you get a Yagi and an automatic tracking system. Um, there are some guys who swear by some antennas where you just have, a, it's like a, a V 
um, and you put it down horizontal and you make it 120 degrees apart. Um, I've made one of those, I get mixed results. Um, honestly, if I, when I'm doing this, as you can see, it's working just fine with the Omni on the uh, on my roof. So what I'm going to do is probably pause this, and when it's done, I'm going to get right back to you so you don't have to uh, listen to this the whole time. And... We are at the end of the pass. Remember, WX2 image uh, knows where the satellites are and, and when they're going to be there and what satellite it is. And it's processing the image, so it's combining the infrared version and the visible version together into some meaningful images. So these are the two images we downloaded. Let's see if I can get these big enough here. So we got visible on the left, and we got. Uh, infrared on the right and there's not much to look at here but what the cool part is is the enhancements so click on enhancements and you got a whole mess of them um, there's a few that are notable um, one of the ones I you know I don't know they're all they're all kind of interesting um, is the MCIR map color you can click on that and see how it put in all of the states and whatnot. Now I can see the ocean, I can see the clouds. Um, that one's pretty good. And you also see this white bar here. This is when I was adjusting the audio. Remember I said don't adjust the audio volume or the gain on GQRX because it changes the contrast of the image um, that WX2 image is recording. So that's an example of, of what not to do. Um, and then under enhancements, uh, another good one is MSA multispectral analysis. I have no idea what that means, but I just think the images look cool. This one's not too bad. Um, this one gets a little weird. Uh, these aren't actually clouds here. This is, it is incredibly hot here in California in the West Coast. Um, so it, sometimes it misinterprets the, uh, the signal, uh, our IR signal coming off the, the Earth. But that one's not too bad. Got a good shot of the United States there. And another one is HVCT false color. I'll click on that. Um, I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. It kind of has a green tint even over the land. I don't know if that's good or not. Um, and then we got, uh, there's actually precipitation maps too. I don't know how it figures out where there's precipitation, maybe just by the IR contrast, but you can see that it can show uh, density um, where there's possibly precipitation. I would say possibly. Hey, and if you're a surfer, you know, you got the sea surface temperature map. Um, this shows the ocean. A little cool off the coast of San Francisco, but boy, here in uh, in Baja, I bet you that water is warm. I bet you that's over 80 degrees now. So that's the sea surface temperature. All right, so um, <laughs> this is WX2 image. It's really what makes all of this possible. Um, GQRX is your the the software the waterfall software that's driving the RTL SDR dongle that we showed you an image of, and uh, G Predict is pretty cool as far as satellite tracking goes. Um, let me see if I can make it bigger. It shows all your satellites. This is NOA 15 that just made its pass over uh, United States. You can turn off the ground track. Actually, I just added the ground track. Um, no, this is a different satellite. <laughs> I don't know which. It gets really confusing when you get a lot of objects here, um, which ground track is actually being displayed. But in any event, 15 came over in the Americas. And what I might do is another video on the Meteor satellites. There's a couple of Russian satellites up there that actually have a digital encoding rather than analog encoding of the image, uh, PSK31 uh, kind of encoding. And maybe I'll do another video on the Meteor satellites. And there's a different uh, client for the Meteor satellites. In fact, uh, if you want to... Uh, an early look at that to look up GLRPT, GLRPT, and uh, of course that's for Linux and Raspberry Pi, and we we'll decode the, the Meteor, the Russian satellites, which are significantly better resolution. And if you want to get crazy and you're really into weather, look into the GOES satellite, G O E S, GOES satellites. Um, you need a lot of extra hardware, a parabolic dish. Um, you usually need a little preamp, um, you know, at the antenna itself or put the Raspberry Pi right at the antenna, you know, because it can't tolerate any amount of coax because of the frequency. And then you just get gobs of data and, and they are spectacular. So the GOES is, is really the way to go there. Uh, the actually meteor uh, satellite is rising in the north. But that's a different video. We'll use GLRPT to decode the Russian meteor satellites. Uh, so that's it for messing with satellites today. I hope you guys have fun uh, looking at outer space, kind of like a radio telescope. Well, not a telescope, but a listener. There's lots of cool signals coming down from space, and they're usually in the 130-something uh, megahertz range. Um, you'll see weird packet data. You know, I'm just, I'm just 
cruising around GQRX in the 130s here. You can see packets popping up here like, you know, what is that signal? I have no idea what that is. I know some guys have decoded the Starlink telemetry too. <laughs> Not Starlink, uh, SpaceX telemetry. Anyways, that's GQRX. All right, guys. KM6LYW Radio. Like and subscribe, of course, if you can. Um, we have a Patreon page at uh, patreon.com slash KM6LYW. Uh, if you like seeing these weekly videos, uh, just put a buck in there. Uh, and if you get a buck, you get early access to stuff, specifically software from that comes from right here. Um, look up my DigiPi videos if you want a, uh, a Raspberry Pi that's totally loaded with uh, uh, amateur radio software. It's headless. It's all driven by a web browser, um, so you don't need a monitor or keyboard. So that's the DigiPi project. And, of course, becoming a KM6LYW Radio Patreon gets you early access to the DigiPi image. And right now, while it's under heavy development, it's the only access to the DigiPi image. Um, so, again, uh, uh, patreon.com slash KM6LYW and uh, like and subscribe. And uh, I'm clear. Thanks.